Hello everyone, we are live from Big Stack TV. Welcome everybody. My name is Helio Pereira and I am the head of business development at Big Stack. And today we're going to dive into a very interesting topic, which is implementing generative AI in your company. But uh, I would like to first remind you to uh, not to miss our upcoming content and events. So subscribe to our channel, check us out in the uh, social platforms. And let's see, let's begin here. I'd like to introduce or ask them to introduce themselves, our distinguished guests, Rod, Hernani, and Anna, please. Um, I'll, I guess I'll go first since you put me up there, Helio. So uh, thank you, I'm Rod Davis and I'm the president of the Better Business Bureau serving Southeast Florida and the Caribbean. And uh, we work with um, thousands of uh, small and medium-sized businesses in addition to large corporations. And uh, we try to help them uh, implement best practices. And AI is obviously the, the buzzword of the day. And so it's an area that we are focused on and uh, working on with the businesses in our community. Hey everyone, my name is Hernani Brada. I'm the head of data science at Big Stack. And just doing a brief introduction of myself, I started my journey in the world of data since my system engineering degree in Brazil. And through my whole career, I've been super headed in supervising AI projects across different sectors like steel making industry, uh, mining, fintechs, auto techs and all kind of type of business from small business, medium and large worldwide companies. And I think that during this talk, we'll explore more the impact and possibilities of generative AI and what some companies are doing in the field. Okay, so I'm Anna Oliveira. I'm a data science consultant at Bix. I worked with Ernani and his team, and I had the pleasure of working a little bit with generative AI and I'm really excited to talk about it. Great, great, wonderful. Well, thank you all for being here. I think we're going to have a very interesting conversation. So let me start start asking Hernani this uh, question. Can you give us a brief overview of what generative AI is and how it, is it different from other types of AIs? Sure. Uh, well, we can imagine like we have this big field, like this big circle involving artificial intelligence, okay? And we go deep, deep uh, around the specifics. So we have this big one that is artificial intelligence. Then we have like the machine learning that's the way that we use, the techniques that we use to get patterns, to teach like the computer uh, how to do classifications, regressions, this type of tasks. If we go down in this circle, we have the deep learning. That's when we start using neural networks. And with this, we can start doing more complex things. For example, doing image classification, text classification. And if you go down further, we have generative AI that we use the GANs that are generative adversarial networks. that are the neural networks, but they are focused on creating uh, new patterns instead of classification patterns. Okay, so with generative AI, we're gonna uh, create new content by creating text, use it to create music, creating videos, like you can see all the way around in the news and all the headlines. Well, this is wonderful. Uh, really is exciting. And this new, this, this a capability of creating new things. Uh, it's just amazing. And it's different from just being trained to do specific jobs, right? Just like pattern recognition or voice recognition, et cetera. Exactly. So, uh, uh, Rod, let me ask you a question. What kind of business cases do you see for all this uh, new stuff that's that's coming out? Well, I think it's it, if you think about it like uh, training an employee, when you first get somebody in new, you give them the basic knowledge. And then through their experiences, they learn how to do things better, faster, more efficiently, how to respond to certain situations. And within an office or within a business, we try to take all that information and package it so we can share it with everybody throughout the organization. And generative AI is kind of taking that and 
using systems to help businesses take all that information and utilize it in the best possible way to position their business to be efficient, to provide excellent service and responses, and to develop new ways of, of interacting um, that will hopefully position that business uh, for su continued success as they continue to learn and grow and use those tools. That's, uh, that's incredible. Uh, then, Anna, let me ask you a question. And why, why do you think it is important for companies to consider generative AI right now? Well, imagine you have all this creative power, the early animation, and you can use this to generate creative solutions, make decisions. You have a tool that can really understand context and really mimics a human talking to you. So it can really be a game changing. As Rod mentioned, I think efficiency is the main advantage here in traditional AI solutions. You can have a supervised learning process, for example, that could uh, last for months. And with a large language model as ChatGPT, you could take the same process to take days or weeks, for example. So there's a really a main gain with efficiency, also customer engagement, because you can personalize marketing methods, content to specific target audiences. And I think all companies should embrace generative AI to have this competitive advantage. And I think not all companies would use generative AI, but they need to consider using it because it could be a really good tool for some problems, especially if, if they are repetitive tasks or something they can automate or customize. Excellent, excellent. Uh, so I think we all agree that it is important to, for companies to consider generative AI. There are so many use cases that are possible, right? Now I'd like to know God's opinion on how how much of a priority is it? Is it some, should companies really prioritize it now or can they wait a little bit and see how things settle down and what technology will win? What, what are your opinions? I think um, it's always hard to be the first one to lead. And um, there, there are always the, the people who want to be the first to market. Um, but I think we, we're getting to a point now where we have enough examples and experience that people can make smart and de decisions on how to use it and where it can best benefit them. And if you find a good partner uh, that has done this for other businesses, they can help uh, those, I won't call them the, the first to market, but the, the ones who want to be taking advantage of it now for a competitive market, uh, get involved and use it in uh, a way that will impact their business in a positive way. They're going to have to make an investment, as, as we all know, in terms of um, uh, contracting with a good partner to do this, and that's going to be money. And they're also going to have to uh, invest time because in order to create a, a, a good uh, AI application, they're going to have to go through a pretty intensive process to pull together all of the uh, background information and, and resources that will feed the, the uh, product to get it going. And then once it's going, you're obviously in a monitoring and in continual refinement mode. So there is a commitment there, um, but I think if they look at it in the long term, uh, it may be an investment in year one, you may break even in year two, and by year three, you're ahead of the game and your competitors who are gonna wait down two or three years down the road will then be at a significant disadvantage in terms of your ability to be more efficient, your ability to interact with customers, um, without having to involve your staff. So you'll have not only more service going out to your customers, but in terms of time, uh, 24 seven for most of the needs of your uh, consumers. Totally agree. I think that is a matter of belief. If you believe there is a return on investment mm -hmm. on Gen AI or AI in general, then you must start at least planning, studying, uh, trying to choose which business process will give you a quick win 
and start talking with your internal employees and people about this idea, you know, uh, educating your your team on this on this theme. So, um, and then he, talking about return on investment, I know you have worked with uh, different project sizes, small, medium, large, proof of concepts. So I would like to ask you two things. First, what are the technical prerequisites for a company to start using Gen AI? And what kind of budgets are we talking about in general? One question, and I think that this question is like a follow-up on what Rod said, because anything that's technical, it should start from the business. So the technology is amazing, but what we're trying to do here is, is solve a real problem real business problems. The first thing that we need to do is like to address what kind of problems, what kind of needs are we talking about. So uh, the first step is to put together the business team and the technical team and say, well, what are our uh, opportunities? What is our challenges? And for each one of the scenarios, what's going to be our return? So with that, the technical team thing can prioritize what they should start working on. Okay, so this is the first step to be aligned with the business team. Uh, the second one should be, like I said, start with uh, a small implementation, like a proof of concept or an MVP to know if it's possible to solve that problem uh, with the technology of generation and uh, generative AI. So for this uh, step, we recommend uh, start with uh, paid APIs like APIs from uh, OpenAI like ChatGPT and DALI um, to start quickly, do iterations quickly, uh, development quickly, and with that getting results as soon as possible. Uh, when we have these results, then we can start uh, studying how to implement the solution. Okay, so depending on the challenge here, we're talking about from five um, to eight weeks, maybe this first step, okay? And after that, we can talk about implementation. So for example, should we use this API that we did on the first step or not? How much is gonna cost? What's like the answer time? Because if I'm doing an application for the end user, I can't wait like three minutes to get an answer, right? So I must be planning for that. And also, we should know if we're gonna go for the path of using like private models that we have in the market or like the open source one. And if you go choosing this path, depending on our business goal or what we want, like how much control do I wanna have on my data and how do I uh, have access to that, I'm gonna also need to uh, do a specification on the infrastructure for that. Okay, so I think that should be the, the goal. So the first one, align what's the problem and how to solve it. The second one, do a small problem concept or an MVP. And the third one, study the implementation and go for it. If it's gonna give a good ride for the, for the business. And I think like talking about sizes of how much this will cost. I think that a partner could help like on these three main steps. If you like contract a partner for that, you like, for example, big stack. And I think that this kind of implementation should be around main steps. Yeah. Are you I'm, are you using uh, ChatGPT to answer this question? <laughs> no, I use the calculator because <laughs> I think we're global. So uh, some clients are on Brazil, and some clients are in the US and Australia. So something around twenty-two thousand dollars, twenty-five thousand dollars for like these kind of steps. For for all the three steps, yeah, until you yeah. get into production, used every day, a product yeah. that you for like, have a return on investment, right? Yeah, for like uh, start talking, doing this first step of. Uh, our first implementation and after that doing all the research on what's the next step you know because depending on, on our next step this is gonna be maybe less maybe, maybe more we're gonna have infrastructure costs so it's gonna be a more complex scenario depending on the business 
Ana, Hernani has just given us a roadmap of beginning to use Gen AI. Could you add some comments to uh, to that with your experience, please? Yes, sure. Yeah, I think Hernani well said and uh, help us with, uh, go through all the steps to implementing generative AI. And I will add that what he said about asking what the real problem is, is really important. As generative AI is, the, is a buzzword, is in the hype, and it's really common through all spaces or internet and all business. It's really important to keep in mind that generative AI is not going to be the best solution for all of problems, not going to be a silver bullet. And it's important to consider generative AI, as I said before, but it's important to keep in mind what is the real problem, what we expect to get, what is the output we, ex we expect from the solution at the end, the return of investment. And after that, it's important to choose what is the best to if it's traditional AI or if generative AI or if software development or whatever. And that's why it's important to have a consultant and person that you can rely on to advise you about, about that. And I think comparing the steps of traditional AI with generative AI, they are kind of similar. And when we talk about collecting pre-processed data, uh, fine-tuning a model. In traditional AI, we actually have to train a model and in generative AI, you just need to fine-tune an existing model with your data, so you customize a model. And after that, you need to integrate the model into your business processes and data at the end and create a process to monitor and adjust the model over time according to users' feedback. I think these are most the basic um, steps that I will add through the implementation of generative AI. Wonderful, wonderful. Great insights here. What you said made me think about two questions, one for Hernani and another one for Rod. So, Hernani, you first. Anna mentioned using your own data to feed these models. Now, how about security, confidentiality? How can we take address care of that? that? Like, yeah, excellent questions. So, in terms of data and privacy and security, it's a technical knowledge that companies like OpenAI have their own terms and services regarding the data storage and the use of data. And they generally advise and recommend that you should not be using your private or sensitive data for the services to mitigate risks. You know? But in terms of using our own data, we have a lot of tools to do to, that we can go on. We can use, like I was saying earlier, we can use open source models like Llama for Meta, that's a model that generates text like ChatGPT. We can also use Stable Diffusion, that's another model for generating images, okay? And we can leverage these open source models with another technology that's called RAG, that means Retrieval Automated Generation. So what we can do, we can create our own database of documents, Okay, that's called Vector Store. And we can put our documents there. After that, we can like prompt what we want from the information. For example, give me documents that are related from um, mining, for example. And what's gonna happen is that a generative AI, okay, will take our question here, we'll transform that. And then we're going to take all the similar documents that are similar to what we're questioning, you know? And after that, we're going to get these documents. It's going to pass again through the generative AI. And it's going to give us an answer. So this is very powerful when we are talking about applications that we have our own data. And most of all, we want reliability of the information. Because what we can see a lot over this is that uh, 
generative AI can hallucinate like chat in. And you don't want to hallucinate when we're doing something that's very technical, that you should be having a lot of being a look very specific and be, when you're being very careful with the information. So with this kind of technologies, we can address the problems of data privacy. We can use our own data and we can also mitigate the problems regarding hallucination and not have a good source of information, a reliable source of information. I see. Do we have to, in this case, if we want to use our own company's data, do we have to upload this data to a certain cloud, a private cloud? Can we keep it on a server, on-premise? How? What are the options? We have all the shapes and sizes. <laughs> we can use, for example, when you're talking about cloud, we can use services like Azure AI Search. That's a vector store that's from Microsoft, and we can upload our documents to there. We can use some other uh, technologies that we can do locally, for example, using a ChromaDB, that's one another vector store. And we can do both scenarios, cloud and on-premise. I think it's more the choice should be like what the business is aiming and what's the, the needs in the end. I see. I think most businesses use some sort of cloud-based services these days, right? So there is already a certain degree of, you know, how secure is my data, really, any type of data. So putting uh, some private data to be used by some Gen AI tool, I believe, uh, incurs in the same risks levels that other types of data are already used today. Now, uh, in this context, uh, I'd like to go back to Rod and ask him, how do you think the companies, especially uh, small and medium companies, what are the ways to analyze their return on investment on these type of initiatives? Yeah, and, and I think um, that's where it's going to be helpful to have examples um, and to work with a, a vendor partner who has managed similar situations they're going to have a good idea of how to price out a, a particular uh, application. And they may also have some ideas for how it worked for a similar business in terms of whether it um, uh, changed their customer service um, process, the number of staff they needed, uh, could they cut back some uh, staffing there as a result of integration of adaptive AI or generative AI. What about in terms of processing, a process that you've had that, uh, as an example, I'll give an example from, from our operation. When we go about looking at a business for accreditation, we look at everything from when they started business, which is their incorporation records, to whether there's been any um, uh, government actions against them. We look at the business principles, who they are, what their backgrounds are, did they get into trouble in the past that we might want to know about? We look at all of their online reputational applications. So reviews on different review sites, other comments. Uh, we look at their licensing. We look at their uh, insurance information. So we're pulling all that from many, many different sources and locations. And that was a very manual process. And it was done repeatedly for us. And I'm able to look at that and say, okay, I know how many staff it takes and my sales are going up, which is a good thing. So I have more business mm -hmm. wanting to become accredited. How can I manage that with the same level of staffing or do I need to add staff? And if I add staff, I know what the dollar amounts are going to be there. So we looked at that and we worked with a, our vendor to automate that um, process to pull together all the information so it sits within uh, a module that my person can then just walk through very quickly. They don't have to go out and do the search. It's pulled together for them. And then they just walk through it. So you can imagine the time saving there. And so we were able to look at that and say, okay, here's the cost to develop it. I know I need another person unless I improve my process. <laughs> I know what that cost is. So uh, how does that equate? And then again, this is a long game. So you want to look at it from the perspective of, I may spend a little bit more in year one, but year two, I might break even year three, I'll see the return on investment. And it lets me 
grow the business and grow the organization. And there are those kind of direct one-to-one uh, trade-offs, but there's also, if you're just looking for better customer service, you may need to take into account, not only are you able to uh, do a better job, but you may be able to serve more of your customers than you could before using uh, AI. And as a result, they may be happier with you and they be, may be more likely to come back and purchase from you again. So you need to think through all of those areas where AI can benefit you, not just direct cost savings, but possibly uh, enhancement to your uh, business reputation and possibly more sales. Exactly. Wonderful, wonderful. So this possibility of scaling in quantity, of improving the quality of your services, of serving more more customers with better quality services is just amazing. You know, I think we're just uh, in, a, in, a, in a phase in history that some will remember, maybe not all, all of you will remember, but of not a long time ago, some companies wondered if they, they needed a, a website or not. Yeah. Yeah. Do I really need this? Yeah. Uh, and uh, well, voila, here's where where we are. Yeah. So, even even the, the brick and mortar ones, Helio, you know, they look back and said, yeah, I don't need that. They know where I am, but now, you know, how many people, we used to use the yellow pages. Well, what is the yellow pages? It's now internet searches. And that's going to become more sophisticated with, um, with uh, AI as well. And what information is pulled together, what's found, what you can search, what you can source. So it's a, it's a brave new world and, and very exciting. And people need to start thinking ahead so they don't get left behind. Exactly. Great. Uh, I'd like to ask a question to all three of you. you can all you give us your take. So let's suppose all companies use AI, are beginning to use AI. What would be able to differentiate them? What kind of approaches will cause these companies to be more competitive than others? Well, I think that's the usage of the AIs. What are you using? It's like in a, it's just a feature that you have. It's like the core of your business. So the way that you use generative AI is, I think that's going to be the most powerful way to improve your business, the way that you use it, knowing what's the value behind it. Yeah, and I would say, you know, uh, I think the businesses that work with really good partners, vendors, and that really invest the time and money to look at those uh, opportunities that that can best streamline or improve their service levels or help meet the needs. So assess what your customers want from you and then figure out how using the new technology, you can actually deliver on that. And it can be an even more unique experience than you could provide before because you're going to have access to all of that data on your customer. So when you engage them, the amount of uh, personalization that you can uh, build into your engagement is going to be night and day. And they're going to look at you and think, oh my God, it's like when you go into the, the doctor's office and they remember you and they know what you were in there for. That is going to be built into the business customer interaction in the future. And that's going to be a differentiator um, between business A and business B. And we all know we want to be treated specially and uniquely for who we are. And uh, AI is going to give us a better ability to, to do that. Anna, any thoughts on this theme? No, oh, I think all was said for we're learning around really good, good thoughts. Yeah, me too. You know, I think that the business fundamentals haven't really changed really uh, sometimes i think of ai as a uh, what micro, microsoft calls a co-pilot it's just a super intelligent new, new employee somebody mm -hmm. that is working with you that can yeah. do things very fast and very accurately sometimes a little mistake in there that can be fixed you know and you can ask for example What, what is a business fundamental? My business processes must be efficient in terms of delivering the value that they're there 
plan for and having the cost they're planned for. If I have this super employee and I ask, hey, um, co-pilot, would you please take a look at this business process that is a core process and tell me how I can improve it? Thank you. And maybe a couple hours later, a couple of minutes later, they're coming back to me answers and new perspectives that my my team, my inside team didn't see before. My C-level folks didn't see before. And I was t- talking to a partner of ours to see if we could get a company that would agree to have a pilot project with us where we would feed into a private gen AI model. Absolutely 100% of the data, accounting, sales, databases, taxes, payments, receipts, complaints, product annuals, uh, and then do a little challenge. Ask AI to plan for next year and ask the company directors to plan for next year and see which one would plan better. I think this would be an interesting challenge. Well, we are getting to the end of this wonderful engagement here. Very interesting opinions. I hope we can do this again sometime, perhaps in the f- few months in the future, we can come back and say, hey, listen, listen, look at what is happening today. And we have new examples and uh, we all going to be involved in this context for a long time, I, I, I hope. So thank you for watching. Please make sure you subscribe to our channel and come back and see us. Thank you very much. Thank our panelists. We see you uh, another time. Thank you.